What if you could plan your next trip and, at the same time, make it easy to review and reuse all your trips for future reference? Or your travel blog? Today, I will show you how Obsidian can help you with that. Let's do it! Let's start at the end. This is what we are going to build. The dashboard offers a set of quick actions for adding various new items related to traveling. This starts with the trips and continues to accommodation, landmarks and other locations like restaurants for example. Below that we have an overview of our upcoming trips grouped by their status and the list of trips for which we still want to write a review. Next we see three top 10 lists covering the most recent trips, the most recently visited landmarks and the best rated trips. And at the bottom of the page we can find our collection of existing reviews for trips made this year, last year or even earlier, but then limited to the 10 latest items. A trip planner would not be complete without a decent map view, which we can find on the right hand side of the screen. This is an interactive map automatically zooming to show any locations linked to or from the currently active node. You can follow along and do it all by yourself, or you can download the whole vault via the link in the description. The vault includes all the plugins, snippets, file structure, file classes, templates and queries. It is built to integrate easily with the other vaults provided by me, for example with the Lean CRM vault. If you have missed that one, check out the video link up here and in the description. With all that out of the way, let's jump right into it. As always, we start with a new and empty vault and build it step by step. To create a new vault, we click on the vault icon and create. Let's call it Lean Travel Tutorial. Browse for a location and click on create. In terms of appearance, I use the minimal theme, the dashboard CSS snippet, the related dashboard read line length CSS snippet, the height node properties snippet and the MCL multi-column snippet. You can find the links to all of those in the description of course. Download the snippets and go to the CSS snippet section. Click on the folder icon and copy all the snippets into this folder. Then come back to Obsidian Click the refresh icon and enable all the snippets. Now we get the minimal theme and enable it. We click on manage, search for the theme, install it and select it as the active theme. Next, we build a folder structure. As always in my vaults, I will have a folder called 90 organize in the root directory. We will use this to keep our templates, lookups, classes, etc. Basically anything and everything that is not actual content. So we create a classes, lookups and templates folder inside the 90 organized one. Under each of those, we will add a subfolder called travel. This makes it easier to merge this world with your own or with others provided by me. Additionally, we create a folder ratings under templates. We will see later why we need that. The only other folder in the root directory is called travel. And in there, we create subfolders for accommodation, FNB, which stands for food and beverages, landmarks, locations, and transport. We will use these folders for entities that can be used and reused in multiple trips, such as airports, hotels, or other interesting locations. And for archiving past trips, we will add one more folder called Z archive. I add the Z in the beginning, so it's at the end of the list of the folders. Now that we have this structure, we also need a few community plugins to provide all the functionality. To install those, we first need to go to Obsidian Settings, Community Plugins, and turn off the restricted mode. This allows us to install community plugins. The plugins we need are Buttons, Data View, Map View, Metadata Menu, Quick Add, Templater. Additionally, I like to work with a few more plugins that make it easier to edit and style my notes. These are the Editor Syntax Highlight plugin, Style Settings, and Update Time on Edit. To install a plugin, click on Browse, enter the plugin name, click on Install and Enable. It works the same with all these plugins, so I only demoed it with the Buttons plugin. If you're working along, pause the video here and install the remaining ones. Continue when you have all these plugins installed. I will wait for you. Now we need to configure a few settings. First, we go to the map view settings. Here we want to make sure that map follows search results is enabled. We can also define the path for creating new nodes from the map. In our case, that's the folder travel and the full template file path for the template to be used. For us, that would be 90 organize slash templates slash travel slash template location.md. Under query format for 
hollow active node, we add the string linked from colon in front of the path variable. Then we scroll down to default mode for opening map view and set it to open in a second pane and keep reusing it. The next part is all about how the map markers for each location type shall look like. We can control this with marker icon rules. By default, all the markers are blue and use the circuit shape. Of course, we can change that. But additionally, we can also define rules based on tags. Here are some examples. I like to define a rule that turns the marker black if I tag the location with hashtag not. This is very useful to identify locations that I don't like and therefore can rule out immediately when looking for a cafe or a restaurant, for example. I also find it useful to distinguish all the markers related to food or drinks. Here, we change the icon to utensils, the color to yellow, and the shape to star. If you don't know the code for a specific icon, use the link to the Font Awesome site in the description. Note that we can use the asterisk as a wildcard to apply a rule to all the tags starting with food in this example. But I can still add specific rules for subcategories. For example, a pizza slice for food slash pizza or a burger for food slash burger. You get the idea. I do the same for transportation, landmarks, places to stay, etc. Which rules and how many you define is entirely up to you. I included a bunch of them in the downloadable world for you already. Then we enter the data view settings and enable JavaScript queries and inline JavaScript queries. Also, do not change the default values under code block settings. The queries in the world are using those. Next, we go to the metadata menu settings, global settings, and make sure the auto complete feature is off and auto calculation is on. Under file class settings, we add the folder 90 organize slash classes as our class file path. I also change the file class field alias to class, but that's a personal preference rather than a requirement. After that, we move to the templater settings, where we define the folder location for our templates. Of course, this is the just created for the templates under 90 organize. The last plugin configuration for now is the update time on edit plugin. Here we need to add our organize folder to the list of excluded folders. This just means that the plugin will not automatically add the created and updated timestamps to our templates. If we don't exclude this folder, it will mess up our templates, which we really don't want. The next thing to prepare here are some lookup nodes. We will need those when we create the file classes for each entity. We could create the nodes also later, but I think it's easier to do it now so we can really focus on the file classes later on and don't need to jump back and forth. We will create all these lookup nodes in the folder 90 organize slash lookups slash travel. I will demonstrate how this works with the first lookup node called lookup accommodation status. The others need to be set up in the exact same way with their respective values. So we create a new node and call it lookup accommodation status. Inside that node, we add the values booked, cancelled, not available, and reserved. We need to make sure that each value is on its own line. The remaining lookup nodes and their values are lookup accommodation type with apartment, hotel, and house. We have lookup countries, which is a list of all the countries you want to use. In the downloadable world, this is a very long list ranging from Afghanistan to Zimbabwe. In the node lookup FNB, we want to have entries that help us to specify the type of food and beverage locations. In my example, this would be bar, cafe, fast food, pub, and restaurant. The lookup review status node is needed to identify whether a trip has a review or not, or does not even need one. Accordingly, the values here are done, in progress, missing, and not needed. The lookup travel status node is required to flag our trips accordingly and then query them based on their status. The various statuses we have here are booked, cancelled, over, and planned. And the last lookup node is lookup travel type. This lets us differentiate between business and private trips and whether we went alone, as a couple, with family, or with friends. This section is all about creating file classes for managing the front matter fields and values for all our entities. We do this by using the metadata menu plugin. If you're not familiar with it, I also created a detailed step-by-step -step guide, including practical examples. As always, the link to this video is also in the description. To create a new class, we click the plus icon next to our classes folder. Obsidian prompts us for a file name and we call our first class accommodation. In the file class settings, we change the button icon to the value house. 
For a list of available icons, check the link to the lucid.dev website in the description. We also link this file class to all the nodes that have the tag name travel slash accommodation or are in the path travel slash accommodation. Under file class fields, we add four fields by clicking on the add field button. Last visit, a date field with no need for further configuration. Visited, a yes, no or boolean field. Accommodation status. This is a single value select field. And here we need to define the values source type as values from a node and select the previously created node lookup accommodation status as the source. And accommodation type is the exact same thing, but of course using the node lookup accommodation type as our value source. And the last step is to move the newly created file class into the travel folder under classes. We follow the same steps for creating the FNB file class. Under file class settings, we change the icon to utensils and link the file class to all the nodes in the folder FNB. Here we need only three file class fields. Last visit and visited are set up in the same way as before, a date field and a boolean field. The field FNB type is a single value select field based on the lookup node lookup FNB type. The next one is the location file class. Here we change the button icon to a map pin and link the class to the tag travel slash location and the path travel slash location. We also add two file class fields called last visit, a date field, and visited, a boolean field. And we have only one more to go. And this is the trip file class. Under file class settings, we define the plane icon and link the class to the tag travel slash trip. Here we need a few more fields than in the other classes, starting with review status, a single value select field based on the node lookup review status. Then we also add travel status. This is the same thing, but based on the node lookup travel status. We do the same for the fields travel type and countries, based on lookup travel type and lookup countries respectively. And then we add two date fields called return and departure. And these are all the file classes we need. Make sure they are all in the travel folder under classes. Once we have done this, we are ready to work on our templates. Basically, we need one template per entity, which would be four templates for accommodation, food and beverages, location, and trip. But we will add one more for landmarks, which are also locations, but more important than others. And therefore we want to make adding them as easy as we can. And lastly, we will need some templates for rating our trips, landmarks, and locations. We create a new node under 90 organize slash templates slash travel and call it template accommodation. And we open the same node side by side so that we can see the source code and the reading view at the same time. The first thing we add is a bit of template code which is executed when a new node based on this template is created. You can of course find the link to this code in the description. It will check for the node's title and if it is untitled, which is a default for new nodes, it will ask us to enter a title. After that, we add our front meta tags for location, accommodation type, accommodation status, visited with a default value of false, last visit and tags, which we fill with travel slash accommodation. Then we close the front meta section with three dashes. Next, we add another short template snippet. This will just take the node title and fill it in as a heading one at the top of our node. The first thing we want to see is contact information and relevant details for our stay. We add icons for the contact name, address, phone number, website, and email address, followed by the check-in and check-out info. Now we select the whole block, press Ctrl P to open the command palette and search for insert callout. Select the same block again and repeat the insert callout command. Rename the first callout block to multi-column and the other two to important and remove one of the greater than signs on the line between both blocks. And as you can see in the reading view, this aligns both blocks rather nicely. Then we just add headings for considerations, short review, long review, and related trips. The short review, we add two inline tags marked by the double colon for rating and summary. Under related trips, we add a short data view query that results in a table with all the trips that link to this node. The FNB template looks very similar, except for the front meta fields where we used location, FNB type, visited, last visit, and tags with the value travel slash location. The location template is identical to that, but without the FNB type field in the front meta. For the landmark template, we can simply copy the location one and add the value landmark to the text field. 
Last but not least, we have the trip template. As with all the others, we have the template code asking for a node title. As front matter fields, we have locations, departure, return, country, travel type, travel status with the value brand, review status, and of course, tags with the value travel slash trip. After the front matter section, we place a link back to our lean travel dashboard, followed by the template snippet for inserting the node's title. In the next section, we keep track of the steps on our journey. Once for going there, that means outbound, and once for coming back, inbound. As before, we use the multi-column snippet and format these as callouts to be aligned side by side. After that, we want to embed a map view of our destination. As this is a template and we don't know what destination it will be used for, we want this map to be dynamic, depending on the value in the locations field in our front matter. We can achieve this with a data view JS query. This query checks the locations field and, if it contains a properly formatted value, splits this value into the respective longitude and latitude. It then uses these values to generate the code block for the embedded map. If the location values are missing or not correctly formatted, the query will issue an error. Below the map, we add headings for transport, accommodation, landmarks, food and beverages, activities, destination-specific considerations, short review, and long review. We will come back to the first five a bit later. For now, we also want to add a little table under destination-specific considerations. This can contain anything we want. For this tutorial, we add a few things like information about the local currency, driving, power, vaccination, visa, etc. Under short review, we add two inline fields called rating and summary. Note that we have to add two colons after each word in order to identify those as inline fields. For reading our trips, landmarks and locations, we want to use a star system, where one star is the worst rating and five stars is the best. By applying these stars easily and quickly, we define one template per rating in the previously created ratings folder. As always, we create a new node we call the first one, one star. The only content of this node is a single line with one field in star and four outlined ones. Of course, you can also use other symbols and a longer or shorter scale. You can use any Unicode character and I left a link for you to a Unicode search site in the description. Then we do the same for two, three, four and five stars, one node per rating with one line per node. Now we have the necessary pieces in place and can start adding content. For example, a new landmark. In Obsidian, we can click the create new node icon and then use the command templater open insert template model, select the landmark template, use the command templater, replace templates in the active file, enter a name and start adding information. But there are a few things I don't like. First, it takes four steps to create a single node. And second, the node is created in our vault's root directory instead of the travel slash locations folder. Of course, we can fix all this manually. We could right click on the folder and select new node. We can move the existing node to the correct folder. But overall, I think we can do even better. We can do all of the above with a single keyboard shortcut. For me, it is Alt and T. This opens a dialog that lets me select what kind of node we want to create. We select New Landmark. Obsidian asks for a title and, after entering it, the node will be created in the Landmark folder using the correct template. Better, right? Let me show you how to set this up. We go to Obsidian Settings and click on Quick Add in the list of community plugins. First, we make sure that the template folder path is correctly set to 90 organize slash templates. Next, we create a multi-entry. This is basically a container holding multiple quick add commands. I will call it new travel. Then we add a template entry called new landmark. We use the little handle at the right to move this entry inside the multi-group and click on the gear icon to open the settings. In here, we tell quick add which template to use when creating a node with this action. In our case, it's the landmark template. We don't care about the file name format and file name, but we will enable the create in folder option and add the folder travel slash landmarks as the target folder. We leave the other options unchanged except for the last one, where I like to define that the new node shall be opened automatically and that the new tab shall be focused after opening it. With that done, we can click out of the configuration for this action. Now we can duplicate the new landmark action and adapt it for accommodation, location, restaurant bar, and trip. For each copy, click on the gear icon, click on the title, select the template path, and adapt the target folder. 
Back in the settings dialog, we now activate the whole group and the actions inside it by toggling the flash icon for all of them. Now we move to the hotkeys section in the Obsidian settings. Click into the filter field and type new travel. Find the line called quick add new travel, click on the plus icon and assign the keyboard shortcut of your choice. As mentioned earlier, for me this is Alt and T. If we click out of the settings and use this shortcut, we will see that Obsidian asks us what node we would like to create. Whatever we choose, Obsidian will use the related template, ask for the node title, fill the node's front matter and move it into the correct folder. Very fast, very neat. This setup allows us to create a lot of nodes quickly and efficiently. To keep an overview of all this information, we will add a travel dashboard. Here we will find the most relevant and recent information in a single place. The dashboard will automatically retrieve the information from our travel nodes. We first create a new node. I put it directly in the root folder and call it lean travel. We add two properties to the node's front matter. CSS classes with the value dashboard. This will apply the dashboard CSS snippet to this node and tags with the values travel and home or dashboard if you prefer. These are not required from a functional point of view, but might be useful later. And because I really don't need to see the dashboard properties when I am in reading view, I also add the value hide properties to the CSS classes field. This utilizes the fourth CSS snippet mentioned in the beginning of this video. The dashboard CSS takes the markdown elements in our node and applies certain styling to them. I open it up side by side so you can see the effect of any changes done. For each level 1 heading it creates a section. We are going to create 4 sections. First one is quick actions. Here we will add some buttons for creating new nodes quickly and easily directly from the dashboard. Then we have trips with a list of trips that are planned, booked or missing a review. The third section is about top 10 lists. This contains our 10 most recent trips and visited landmarks, as well as the 10 best rated trips. And last not least, we have the section completed reviews. This gives us quick access to all the reviews for trips in the current year, the previous year and the 10 most recent older ones. Each of these sections is set up to hold up to three columns of information. We can add columns by entering bullet lists. For the trips sections, I will add end, booked and missing review. Under top 10, we want to have most most recent trips, most recent landmarks, and best rated trips. In the completed review section, we want to group our reviews by trips made this year, last year, or earlier, and here only the 10 most recent ones. Now it is time to fill all these columns with their respective content. Of course, we could do this manually, but this would be a nightmare to maintain and make our lives harder rather than easier. So we will use DataView.js queries instead. To get a list of all planned trips, our query looks like this. We search for all nodes stored in the folder travel or its subfolders, where the tags field includes the string trip and the field travel status equals the string band. We then sort the result by the departure date in ascending order to see the earliest trips on top of the result. The result itself will show the file name with a direct link to the node and the name of the country based on the country field in our nodes. Make sure that the DataView.js block is properly indented under the bullet of the list above. We can copy the whole block and paste it under booked and we just change the value planned to booked and our second column is done. For the missing reviews column, the first first part stays the same, but we now filter for nodes where the travel status equals over and the review status equals missing. This time we sort the result by the return date in descending order, listing the most recent trips on top. We also change the output a bit. Instead of the country name, we now display the return date. For the most recent trips, our query needs just a few modifications. We now look for items where the travel status is over, sort the results based on the return date, show the country name and limit the number of results to 10. For the 10 most recently visited landmarks, the query looks for the string landmark in the tags field and returns only items where the visited field is set to true. The results are sorted by the last visited date in descending order and show the file name as well as the rating value. As before, we limit the results to 10 items. Under best rated trips, we are again looking for trips that are over. Additionally, we only want results that have a rating. We sort those based on the rating field and show the rating under the file name. Again, we show only the first 10 results. 
This is the query for getting this year's trip reviews only. It first gets the current year, converts the value in the departure field to a date object and compares this date object's year with the current year value. Then it sorts the results by the file name. For last year's reviews, the query looks similar. We just need another line calculating the previous year based on the current year minus one, and then we compare the departure year to that value. And the last query calculates the start of the previous year, compares this value to the departure date, and only returns items where the departure date is before the previous year's start date. Once again, sorted by file name, but this time limited to the first 10 results only. You probably noticed that I skipped the quick actions section. That's because I want to add some buttons there. So let's see how to create these buttons first. Buttons can be very useful in Obsidian for triggering single commands or more complex command sequences. We will use them as an easy way to add new items directly from our travel dashboard. To do so, we place our cursor where we want to add the first button. Open the command palette, in my case with Control P, and search for buttons, button maker. In the button model, we enter a name. This will be visible on the button itself. Let's call it trip. As button type, we select command, and as command, we look for quick add and choose the new trip action. We also add a clear button ID called add trip. We pick our preferred color. I will go with blue and click insert button. This will add a code block and we can see in the reading view the newly created button. We can repeat the same steps and create buttons for adding accommodation, landmarks and locations. Of course, we need to pick the correct quick add action every time. Alternatively, we can simply copy the first button code block and modify it directly. Make sure to spell the action name correctly and update the button ID. Once we are done, we can see that all the buttons are below each other. This wastes a lot of space. So we once again apply the multi-column layout by selecting all the blocks, inserting a callout twice, renaming the last one to multi-column and removing a single greater than symbol from the lines separating each block. Our dashboard looks pretty good by now, but a bit empty. But before we can fill it up, we have two more things to do, hotkeys and workspaces. I configured six dedicated hotkeys. You can keep or change them as you wish. We start with the hotkeys for our ratings. To do so, we click on the settings gear and templater. We scroll down to the section template hotkeys and click the add new hotkey for template button five times. Then we select the templates for one, two, three, four, and five stars respectively, one per line. Now we click on hotkeys in the settings navigation and search for rating. We get a list of the five just defined templater actions. We click on the plus icon next to each of them and assign the shortcuts alt plus one to alt plus five. Okay, we are almost ready to enter data. The last step is to set up our workspaces. Once again, we click on the settings gear. We go to core plugins and scroll all the way down to workspaces and enable them. Then we go again to hotkeys, search for load and assign the shortcut Control shift l to the command workspaces load workspace layout. We close the settings and arrange our obsidian in the way we would normally use it. This could be an empty node or whatever you like. Then we press Ctrl P to open a command palette. We select Workspaces, Manage Workspace Layouts. We enter default as the name for this workspace and click on Save. Now we arrange Obsidian the way we want it while planning our travel activities. For this, we close the side panes, open the dashboard, open a new tab, use the command palette to open the map view in the new tab, arrange the dashboard and the map side by side. In the map menu, we enable the option follow active node. Under presets, we click on save as default. Then we close the view and preset sections. After that, we press Ctrl P again to open a command palette and search for manage. We select workspaces, manage workspace layouts again. And this time we enter lean travel as the name for this workspace and click on save. If we now use the shortcut Control shift l we can easily switch between our default and our travel planning workspaces. Now let's see it in action. Congratulations! You have completed the whole setup. Now it's time to put it to the test. If you run into problems, first check the online documentation. You can also join my Discord server and ask questions there. I will answer as well and as quickly as my day job allows. Alternatively, you can download the full world, including some demo data, from my website. I left links to all of those in the description. Okay, let's start filling up our dashboard. I will create one item for each entity 
And then I will copy a few of others in to have more content here, but the process is of course the same all the time. Let's start with a trip. I would like to go to Vienna this year. I will call it Vienna 2024. And something that I like to do is to add to the name of the trip a bit of an icon telling me what kind of trip it is already. So in this case, for example, I could say I'm going alone. So I just take this single person and say OK. Now, the first thing I need to enter here is the location coordinates. Because if we don't do that, we get this error from the query, which would create our map. Now, in order to find the location coordinates, I can simply go over to the map view, click on the search icon, search for Vienna in this case, click on it, right click on the pin and copy the geolocation. I then paste it over here. And then there's one more thing we need to do. We need to remove these brackets and the text. So we only want to have the coordinates without anything else. And if we do that, then we will see that the map is automatically being created down below. Next, I want to specify the departure and return dates. In my case, this would be in June, I think from 5th to, I can also type them, of course, 7th of June, 2024. The country, of course, in this case would be Austria. So I can select this from a list, which is coming from the lookup node. Travel type is private alone. Currently, the travel status is still planned and review status, I don't have one, but I also know because this is a private trip, I will not need a review at all. And with this, we have the basic data for my trip. I would like to add the locations that are relevant for my travel steps, like airports and train stations, etc. To do so, I go back to my dashboard, click on add location, give it a name. In my case, I will start with train station rush off. Go back to the map, search for Gara in this case, because this is Romanian, rush off, and once again, copy the geolocation. By the way, here's a tip. If it should happen to you that you don't find something here in the map view, you can actually use Google Maps directly. You simply search what you're looking for and then right click on the pin and left click on the coordinates. It will get copied and you can then paste them into the location field. Once again, make sure you have it properly formatted, meaning this space needs to be removed. And if we remove the search result on our map view, we see this specific location because as we said in the beginning, this is an interactive map following along with what we see in the active node. Now, I also want to take this as transport train. And if I do that, then our map marker changes based on the rules we defined in the map view plugin settings. Remember, I defined a bunch there. In my case, transport is square and green. Okay, coming back to my trip from the train station, I will go to the airport. So I add yet another location. In this case, it's airport Bucharest. I will search for it. There we go. Copy the geolocation, put it into the location field, remove the unnecessary characters. And I will give it the tag transport pane. And we see that the map marker updates accordingly. Now back in my trip, I can see I'm going from the train station to the airport Eucharist. When I do that, the map will update accordingly. And now I have both locations visible because both of them have been linked to from my trip node. Now, this is how we add locations. Let me quickly also add an accommodation item. In my case, it's a private apartment in Vienna. Once again, I would search for it. The accommodation type is an apartment. Status is reserved. And I will add another tag here, which is stay apartment. Once again, this will change the map marker. Here, I would add additional information about the person, check in and check out date, etc. But more importantly, back at my trip node, I can scroll down and under accommodation, I can simply link to this one and it will show up in my consolidated map. Sometimes we need to switch nodes to update the map on the side, but there we have it. We have the airport, the train station and my accommodation. Now, the last item I want to add manually is a landmark. Um, let's call this St. Stephen's. Search for it. There we go. St. Stephen's Cathedral. That's the one. Copy the location, paste it in. See, this is a landmark building and we have the specific map marker. We want to say under landmarks, we add to St. Stephen's Vienna. Then we will see that Vienna has now the number two here, simply because on this zoom level, we cannot differentiate these two icons easily. So it clusters them. But if we zoom in far enough, we will see both items next to each other. All right, so this is how it basically works. Let me quickly copy a few other items in there. As you can see, I added a few trips, a few landmarks, etc., so that we have some entries in each category on our dashboard. There's one more thing I wanted to show quickly, which is using our ratings. So if we were to go to a trip, for example, then as you re might remember, we have our inline field rating down here. And this is where we can use the hotkeys we defined before. So I can press 
Alt and 1 for a 1 star reading or I could press Alt and 4 for a 4 star reading, whatever you prefer. The same is of course true if we go to a landmark. So once again, we have the reading inline field and we can use Alt 5 to give it 5 stars. And we can add a short summary, nice church, for example. And this kind of information would become visible when we hover over the respective item in our map. So it's really just to give you a super fast view and information about what you thought when you visited it last. And there's one more thing on the locations, respectively on the landmark node. We have here this section related trips. This is a short data view query, which simply gives us a list of all the nodes that are linking to this respective landmark or this location. For example, if you had a hotel that you prefer in a specific country and you go there again and again, then you would see all the trips during which you used this specific hotel. And this is one way to build a travel planner, including a review function for yourself or your blog in Obsidian. Is it the best way? I don't know, but it works for me and might well work for you. You can download a dedicated vault with only the travel elements that I showed in this video via the link in the description. As always, you can then customize it in any way you wish. If you found this video even remotely helpful, perhaps drop a like, subscribe to the channel and ring the notification bell to make sure you won't miss the next ones. Let me know what you think about this, what you are missing or would change. As always, I will be more than happy to read and respond to your comments. And that's it for today. Thanks for watching and see you next time.